I mean, we have a lot of clients, and it's, and more importantly, right. we have opposing parties that aren't letting go of their hatred and their hurt feelings and their desire for revenge, and they've got an attorney that's really stoking that. Right. And it's this desperate need to be right mm -hmm. and need to be appreciated, need to feel special, and the need to be right. They have this argument that they're only having with themselves, mm -hmm. and they can't let it go. And they have to really understand that you can be right about the way that you feel. Mm -hmm. um, but the right thing to do also is to let it go. Right. Because you can either be right or, and hold on to that and let it destroy you, or you can be happy. Right. And you have to let that go in order to be happy. Um, and well, that's and a I big think part that of what if we you don't let it go through. and you, you hang on to being right or hang on to being perfect, then you're going to lose out on so much. One, two, three, go. Jennifer Hardy RR. Believe it or not. Welcome to the Lawyer Dana Show. The Lawyer Dana Podcast. Wow, we have a lot to talk about. Then we're gonna do it right after this. Welcome to the Lawyer Dana Podcast. So, all right, we got some, uh, do you remember where we were in those books? So we started going over the secrets of a great leader. And I think we left off on <clears throat> motivate yourself and others. Well, that's appropriate for the, yeah. like this is the, we're starting, we're filming this one right after lunch. And we always have this, like, I want to go to sleep <laughs> <laughs> right after we eat lunch. Yeah. And the strange thing is, is like most days I don't eat lunch, but since we eat, since everybody's eating, like I eat and then I get like that energy dip. It's weird because I'm the same way. Like at home when I'm working, I yeah, I didn't I think have, you ate lunch. No, I usually put yeah. some almonds next to my desk, and then I'll eat berries. Like I'll have berry, but berries yeah. like kick my energy up. Well, I learned raspberries. I, well, I learned this week that blackberries. Well, yeah, there's probably vitamin B in that stuff. So. B and C. Yeah, but I learned this week that you can eat too many almonds, and it can cause really. You can like toxicity in you know your body. You're supposed to eat blanched almonds with almonds with the skin removed because the skin is uh, something about the skin. I don't really what it is, but, did yeah. not know that. I've yeah. been eating them with the skin on. Yeah, I mean, I, I do too, but apparently the uh, the skin of almonds is like has some kind of toxin in it or something. I don't know. I, huh. I don't know whether there's a toxin or something about it, but yeah, you're really well, not yeah, supposed to Well, yeah, you're not supposed to consume more than, I think I read, 32 almonds in one day. 32 almonds a day. <laughs> These statements have not been evaluated by the Food Google and Drug it. <laughs> Administration. I actually, because it, what I read was that if you eat too many almonds, you can actually create an allergy to almonds. Really? Yes. I'm, I'm quite certain that I've definitely then, eaten more than 32 well, almonds in one sitting. Well, and then I was kind of, yeah, well, that's kind of where I was like, uh-oh, because I was like, I spent like last week every day. That's what I ate for a snack. It was like a big bag of almonds, and I just kept eating them as I worked. <laughs> have you seen any good movies over the weekend? No, I have not. I do want to see the new Jurassic World or Park. Or uh, I've heard is. mixed reviews on that. I want to see. I it. want to go see. Rick, you're shaking your head. No, it wasn't any good. I don't know if it was any good or not because I didn't see it. But everything I've heard is bad. However, I finally saw Top Gun. <sighs> Perfection at the theater. Awesome, like, wasn't it? Yes. Hands down, the most perfect movie. I want to see it again, years. and I want to see it again in D box again because after I saw it the first time, mm -hmm. I, I kind of wanted to see it in D box. Yeah. With the vibrating seats and that goes back and forth. And now that I've seen it in D box, I definitely want to see it in D box. <laughs> like I want to see it again. It was an adventure. It was a ride. Like you're in the plane. Like when you're you're moving and it's rattling. Like it was it was it was yeah. great. I have to give kudos to the directors and the writers, though, that they were brilliant enough to take a throwaway one-line character from the first movie and put her in the second movie as yep. the love interest. Because there's literally a reference to Penny in the first movie, and it's a throwaway sentence. Yep. And now you're like, oh, they bring her back. And they do it in a brilliant way. I think they really, really did a great job on it. And I like how they also, they didn't make any particular country the enemy. They just said the enemy. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a great way to do it, actually. What would you think? <laughs> so my best friend is a, is a nut for this stuff. And he goes, hands down, it's Iran, and here's why. And the only country in the world that had the Tomcat is Iran. We sold some to Iran in the 80s. 
They're the only country in the world that had the Tomcat. So when they go and what happens at the end, I don't want to give it any away. When that happens, yeah. it's because Iran got them from us. He goes, so it has to be Iran. I go, well, they never say who it is. He goes, I don't care. It's yeah. Iran. And I'm like, okay, it's Iran. <laughs> and I'm like, whatever. Okay. <laughs> so I had a client uh, from Iran, and he taught me that it is not Iran. It is Iran. And he was very adamant about that. I bet. And we are always adamant about where you're from and how you yeah. pronounce it. So yeah. now I watched uh, I watched Machine Gun Preacher. <laughs> That's what I watched. What? <laughs> Machine Gun Preacher. Yeah. It's a good movie. It's it based off a true story. What? Yes. <laughs> yes, what? Gerald Gerard Butler is in it. Okay, I and guess I'm going to watch Machine Gun Preacher sometime. So he's, in the beginning, is a heroin addict. Like, he just gets out of jail. A what? Heroin act, addict. Attic? Yes, attic. <laughs> <laughs> like the attic in the roof of your house? Where are you from? Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> She's from Mesquite, but they kept her in the attic. Hey, <laughs> 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 hey, so good. Yeah, there's a T on the end of that word. <laughs> yes. Anyway. Can you say it? <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Attic. Attic. I think that was close enough. You're gonna need to learn that before uh, we have Brian Cuban on the show because one of his books is The Addicted Lawyer. And if you say I the, can say the addict, addict, addict lawyer. Now you're making me mess up. Never you're mind. gonna say the attic lawyer. <laughs> We will. I will donate a hundred dollars to your favorite charity <laughs> if you say the attic lawyer <laughs> during during his visit <laughs> during his show. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> All <right>. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So to the table of contents. Yes. All right. Which one yes. are we on? All right. I think we are on motivate yourself and others. So before we go to that. <laughs> <laughs> You want to hear more about the Have movie? I told you about the <laughs> the uh, um, the uh, Dale Carnegie book that I was reading? No. How to Stop Worrying and Start Living, I think is the name of it. Hmm. But great book. I've listened to the audiobook th three times and I did it. I listened to that audiobook like three times the first mm -hmm. week that I that I read it. It's great. And I have it I have the actual physical book. I'm going to read it. It's along. kind of funny. I started a book it's called Dividing the Red Sea and it's very similar. What's it to about? That. Oh, well, it's about, uh, it's biblical principles about worrying and having faith yeah. and trust and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, he mentions the biblical stuff. Yeah, in the and, it, and it, it brings up, like, the part in the Bible where uh, Moses divides the Red Sea yeah. and how God does that to protect the Israel, Israelites from the Egyptians. And, like, it's like if you are constantly worrying and you're constantly not trusting you're basically not like you're sitting against god that way because we're supposed to have faith and trust and yeah. and not worry so if you're constantly yeah. worry worrying about things that then you're you're not doing justice by what god's trying to help you well, through yeah you're definitely not aligned in faith and right um but then it also talked about how like some of us that's just what we are we like some people that's that's it doesn't mean i think that, it's a bad habit yeah. I, I don't think it's something that we should be doing mm -hmm. and i always find that if you're worrying it's you're not growing to the level of wisdom and and proper thought i would mm -hmm. say that you can be because anytime that i find that i'm worrying about something you, you you really should put that into proper context about what you're mm -hmm. doing and identify the things that are worrying you and this is actually mentioned in the book um and you identify the things that are worrying you, and you can even write them down mm -hmm. and he one of the things that gave the author the realization about what to do with it was he did that he actually wrote down all the things and he looked back at that list at a later time and it turned out none of those things were things that happened and he didn't need to be worrying about them at all Mm -hmm. and um, they're all things that you get past and it's a very very healthy approach and I highly recommend that book mm -hmm. like multiple reads on that book and the interesting thing that uh, right at the beginning was I thought that Dale Car Carnegie was our Andrew Carnegie's son but he's not 
he was a professor and actually at one point he he, he was a teacher and taught classes at the YMCA huh. um, and spelt his name differently and then once he went to um, it was he I forget the details about it but he went to a particular place that he gave a lecture at and then changed his name to the, the same spelling as Andrew Carnegie uh, I think it was like after he went to Carnegie Hall or something like that. Oh, wow. Um, but I always thought that he was his son, but he's not related at all. He was just a, a wise author. Hmm. And uh, found that Well, I think everybody can recognize that the more you worry, the less happy you are. Absolutely. And that it takes away your happiness because you're always worried. Absolutely. And you're always stressed and you're always... And there's no point in it. There's no benefit right. in it. Right. And you're you're ruining the present based on anxiety about the future and there's no there's no reason to do it mm -hmm. and the um we were here with kareth in, in, in one of our last episodes she oh, mentioned yeah. like the highs and the lows mm -hmm. and, all, and not always being happy because of her book um it was you can you can either be It'd be happy or right or you can be happy or you or can, yeah, you can be, be perfect or you can be happy yeah or be perfect like or you can be happy and um and she has a little quiz on her site so if you go under her website you can actually we do should the take quiz. That quiz i actually did last night you did yes can we should we can we and take got, it on the air and i can got one of y'all like print that out let's take we'll take it on the air i got perfect <laughs> you got perfect yes. instead of happy i got perfectionist so that doesn't surprise me well, and it's weird because I sit there and I think to myself, work-wise, I am like that. I'm a very big perfectionist. Like, I want things right. I yeah. want things done good. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty much home life, too. But when it comes to, like, does my house have to be perfect or, like, I can let certain things go. Like, there's certain things in my life I feel like I can, I don't have to have it all perfect. So um, there was parts of the quiz where I did did say like yeah that's fine that doesn't bother me, but there it I recognize like the questions that were more work related. Per, I want perfection. Like it's important to me that people see well, that. Seeing good, how you work for do, the company that I own. <laughs> do a good job. <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> well, it, it and. I mean that's good. That's probably why I hired you, especially it's since. It's good, but it also. I mean you're you're pretty much the the one of the linchpins of quality control at the firm yeah <clears throat> and you bring in good and high quality people and th the things that you implement have long-term ripple effects and long-term waves of of goodness that flow throughout right. the firm no and I mean as a as a law firm we've kind of had um you know coming in I had a feeling this was going to happen like we've lost some people through the process of me coming on board. But I don't think it's because of me. I, I think it's because that's just kind of how it happens. You know, yeah. when new management comes in, you implement policies or you put more, more um, emphasis on policies mm -hmm. and people decide whether or not they want to stick around or they want to go do something different. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, okay. Oh yeah. All right. Here, why don't I do you? Oh, here we go. Because I've already done it. Don't tell your husband you asked me that. <laughs> <laughs> what is oh wrong my with gosh. you? You can't. You, like, you can't. <laughs> that joke can't be made. Like, it's hilarious. But come on. <laughs> I'm not editing this out. <laughs> oh, right. he knows. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Okay. Did I mention tomorrow's my anniversary? I, until so hold <laughs> until this, this episode <laughs> until airs. after yeah until this podcast airs. <laughs> hey, you're the one that said it, not me. I didn't mean it like that though. <laughs> I know. All right. Okay. Question one. Okay. I regularly feel like I should be more or should be doing more. <laughs> true. I feel or the false setup on this already. Or sometimes. Um, true. Uh, w w oh, so what's the answer? I thought it was. <laughs> so go back and I'll tell you what I thought the question was. It says, I regularly feel like I should be more or should be doing more. Uh, doing more. Yes. True, false. Oh, or true, false. Or, I was like, I thought it was a choice between the two. And I was like, no. I didn't even realize like some people don't want to be more or do more. Um, so what is it? What's the true, false or what? Sometimes. True. 
I could answer. I that see where you. we're going with this. I get stressed. Fifty once. bucks. <laughs> if this is not going towards perfectionist, I guarantee I, I, you this is going to. I guess, is there not an option for happy perfectionist? <laughs> I get stressed when something isn't done right. True. <laughs> Do you really need me to be here for this? Can I? <laughs> Everybody in this room can answer Just this let for me. Jen do it, and, and you can. <laughs> so and she true. Answers, you say yes or no. <laughs> That's what I would do. I am my own worst critic. Again, like true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're all true. I consider something perfect when I have multiple people's approval. I don't need that. Yeah. See, I was the same way. So true. Oh God, then we're probably. So this is probably <laughs> the other. You, you think you're supposed to do everything true, and then you get to that, and then you're like, oh no. It's not all true. No, no, there's some that's not true. So are you true? We know you're not true. So false. are you false? Okay. I don't know. That maybe it's sometimes. Well, I, mean, I already pushed false. It, yeah. Okay. False is fine. I overthink simple tasks. Oh, true. No. True. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is a true. <laughs> Even when I saw that, I was like, true. For you, not for me. Me, I, don't, I was I like, I don't always oh. over, overthink. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> The audience is throwing fruit at me, <laughs> throwing plastic empty bottles. All right, so. I get easily distracted the more True. difficult things. <laughs> it is hard for me to accept compliments. True. True. I hate the idea of screwing things up. True. I will reduce something. Does she give you like a score of how far you are? Oh, she'll, like, she'll, I think I'm having the perfect <laughs> score on perfectionist. <laughs> I will reduce something until the end result is perfect. Um, sometimes. Yeah, I was sometimes on that. I constantly second guess myself. Mm. No. Yeah, I didn't really think that of you. When I've made a mistake, I think about it for some time afterward. Sometimes, yeah, no, true. I mean, sometime afterwards, like I, if I make a mistake, I analyze it and try and figure out how to how to evolve yeah, that mistake I would say true out that. of my habits and into a routine. If it's a systematic thing, then I figure out if it's a systematic thing that I can change a policy, mm -hmm. a procedure, a routine, a habit. Right. And I'm always constantly well, trying to improve. Well, I would hope a lot of people do that, you know, because that's I would, how you grow. I would hope that a lot of people do, but uh, I, I think a lot of people don't, but I think a lot of good people do. I think that's what good people need yeah. to be doing. Yeah. Good enough is not okay. I am not happy unless it's perfect. False. Okay. Good enough is good enough. I, I have a, such a magnitude of things that I do really, really well that good mm -hmm. enough is good enough. I mean, yeah. it depends. Like, if I'm giving a performance, my standard is perfection, and then I... So, that's not true. My rehearsal is to perfection. Mm -hmm. And then, once I, ha once I am so solid in the perfection of that rehearsal, then I go out and can absolutely just have fun with it. And then that makes it actually the performance better than perfect. Mm -hmm. Because the perfection to a standard, if you shoot for perfection as a standard, you're only going to get so, so, so good with it. And you might give a technically perfect performance. Mm -hmm. But then the, the love and the passion and the, the magic of it doesn't happen until you have well over, overcome, in, in like, especially like a musical performance, mm -hmm. you have to get it to where like there's no thought involved. It is, it is mechanical, it is pleasure, it is just joy up there. And then you see how beautiful and how joyous you can be and you get the feedback from the audience, you get all, the, all of that and that's where the magic is. Right. And even now, like I'm looking at the people that are out here and feeding back off of them, this podcast has, has that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the things that we teach, we are so beyond perfection of the things that we know and that we're coming in. It's more of the let's have fun and come and right. be entertaining. And that's where the magic comes in. That's what makes the show entertaining. And that's also why we get to slow starts on episodes, right, the first episode right off. I mean, the, if y'all are still watching this, there was a market dip. I'm like, people are going to be <laughs> like, because like you and I weren't even wanting to necessarily be here. Now we're kind of, now yeah. that we have something to go through, we're into it. But all right, next question. Okay. I constantly compare myself to others. Hmm. Um, no, mm. uh, no, I'm aware of like what the market factors are, but I'm I more, say sometimes. no, here's what that is. <laughs> well, so, and don't answer yet. I'm not answering. Okay. <laughs> but I'm constantly comparing myself to how I was yesterday. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm constantly comparing myself to what I've done in the past and constantly comparing myself to the standards that I've set to, for myself and, and, and because of the lessons that I've learned and because I know how good I can be is that I want to be that or better. Yeah, but and that's not that. you, it's others. So others. Um, <laughs> Not really. I would. I would say. I, I mean, don't answer yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> but what do you think? I mean, what do you think that I'm getting at? I say sometimes. Probably sometimes. I think it's a sometimes. I would. I say that's and a fair answer for honestly, that type of for that not, for that part of the quiz. Yeah. So where's um, the, was there one that I constantly over, overthink simple things? Yes. So yes, I just did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that question. <laughs> I worry more about getting something done right than actually getting it done. Um, hmm. More about getting it right than actually getting it done. Hard to say on that one. I think I mean, you're it depends a, on what I it is. I think it's sometimes. It's a sometimes. I mean, I'm not, most of the time I don't worry about getting things done and, and especially where I am with my business now and as a CEO, mm -hmm. I'm in a constant state of analyzing what I'm tolerating mm -hmm. and then deciding whether or not and, and changing the priorities for, I don't want to tolerate this. This is going to be fixed now, or I have to tolerate this because it's getting fixed, or I have to tolerate this because we don't have a mechanism to fix it. Mm -hmm. Or I have to tolerate this because I'm the, the people that have been hired to do it. Mm -hmm. I have to let them go through the process with which to do it. Mm -hmm. And as opposed to like just being anxious about it. And there are some things like, I'm tolerating in here like there are things I, I would want to organize in the room that we're in and like there's a little bit that I was kind of sort of tolerating um, over the past day or two when summer was like out and I was taking care of the dogs or whatever and I didn't um, like this is going to sound weird but I didn't run the dishwasher once and I had left some dishes in the sink like overnight which is highly uncharacteristic for me yeah like I will I all just things especially in my immediate environment I do like them to be like I'm not OCD mm -hmm. but I just understand the effect that that has on you know the the amount that I can achieve right. and the distraction that it is ar around me and it's easy thing to eat to maintain uh that level around me but right no totally get it but yeah so what do you think on that one sometimes I uh, sometimes yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, new methyl, I always say this word, I can't say that word. I'm gonna pronounce it wrong and then you're gonna make fun of me, so I'm not saying it. <laughs> Something about D's and G's together, like, I don't know, I have problems. I want to guess is like methodology or something. Thank like you. That. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's it, he no. got it. Uh, I just had a feeling that was the word. <laughs> Come on, try it, you can do it. <laughs> Come on, Mesquite. Hey, you. <laughs> New metho methodologies, methodologies really cause me stress until I figure them out. No. False. Okay. I'm not an idiot, I promise. I feel like we're she right just now. She had a mom that your mom just didn't correct no, you on. it's not just that. Like, I don't know. There's certain letters when they come together. Have like, you, I have a really have hard you had, time. that could be a hearing thing. It might do you have be. a do you have a long lost twin that you lost a, a, after about two or three years that you don't remember? So have you you know what twin talk is? <laughs> no. So twins develop their own language between the two of them. And uh, when I was in high school, my very first girlfriend, who she was just a sweetheart, um, it, 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 uh, of everybody that I've ever dated, that there were there were two worth marrying. One is my wife, mm -hmm. and two is my very first girlfriend. And I blew that like an idiot. Like, yeah. I was just I wasn't. And we wouldn't have worked out until I was like probably 35. Yeah. Uh, which is when Summer and I happened to get married. Like right. I was definitely not in any kind of framework to get married until I was 35. But, but she was a twin mm -hmm. and they had this accent that was like not any normal person's accent. Mm -hmm. And they had some kind of hearing thing, but it, I, but it was a combination of a hearing thing and twin talk. Huh. Um, and that, well, last time I looked, that. I was not a twin. <laughs> <laughs> Are you dated, sure? Did I ever, ever tell you I dated twins? Do you have like a Do you have like a little, a little thing right here that used to be your sister? <laughs> <laughs> I, I never. <laughs> I'm not like. We my, just got canceled. <laughs> I'm not like my big fat Greek wedding where she tells them her twin was in her spine. They, <laughs> did you not see yeah, that? Yeah, I think that's and where I got aunt, that joke from. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I, never, I never told you I dated twins. 
No. They always ask how I could tell them apart. Both of them? Well, so I dated a twin, and my friend was like, how do you tell them apart? And I'm like, well, my girlfriend has pink nail polish, and um, <clears throat> Rob has a penis. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh classic. my gosh. <laughs> All right, next question. All right, I am harder on myself than my friends. Yes. Okay. Um, it's not progress in, unless it's way better than what I did before. No. False. Yeah, I mean, small progress is progress. I prefer to have others' approval before I consider something acceptable. No. It's okay for other people to make mistakes, but I should do better. Yes. <laughs> I put a lot of pressure on myself to be perfect. Um, I mean, I'll go with sometimes. I don't know that it's, it's not really pressure. Uh, I just have very, very high standards and but at this point in my life, it's easy for me to make those because I'm, I'm just very well trained. And when you've disciplined yourself and trained yourself, it's just easy to do it. It's actually more difficult for me to do things wrong than it is for me to do things well. I'm putting my work email address in here so we can see your results. Let's is see. it going to tell you immediately? So that was the test? Uh-huh. Why do I feel... I feel naked. <laughs> well, I'm not, obviously. That's where everybody like everybody I'm listening on the podcast like looks. <laughs> have you have you put it down and you're just listening to this one? Yeah, no, I'm still clothed. All right. Results. Results. Dun, okay, dun. so perfection right. is your middle name. Based on your answers, <laughs> here's what you are on the perfect happy scale and I'm, what that, makes, that means. That, may, that means my initials are DPP. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> you done with DPP? <laughs> Dana Perfection Palmer. <laughs> it says, first off, take a deep breath. Sure, you scored <laughs> off the charts on the perfectionist scale, but there is good news in this rev of... Rev, rev, uh, Talk today. Revelation. I can't say it. Revelation. Revelation. I don't know what's wrong with me. Sorry. <laughs> that happened to me a few weeks ago. <laughs> it's bad. For one thing, this isn't a life sentence. Also, if you are this passionate about making things so perfect, you can certainly shift that energy into less destructive behavior that offers even greater results. That is because you are a visionary. That's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> You see the big picture. You see the long-term game. You Always. have full comprehension of the scope of your impact and actions on the world. You get it. You fall, or you've just fallen off track a bit because the need to be perfect has consumed you to the point of being detrimental in multiple areas of your life. This is the mass, master Christ in you. Masochist. 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 Sorry. I say, say it one more time. <laughs> I hate you. Shut <laughs> up. Masochists believe in their heart of hearts. Masochist. Heart that anything less than perfect is not acceptable. At least for them. Like. Masochist. Yes. Masochist. What's funny is it's usually only masochists who yeah. have an issue. While they're beating themselves up relentlessly, everyone else is thinking, wow, that was amazing. But the maskinist just <laughs> loves replaying the scene. Maskinist. I hate you. I think conversation I think you need to... over and over again, even after it was long past. And then it's talking about misery loves company. So I get it, but I don't I don't have a problem with it, do I? Do you think I do? I have had a problem with it in the past. That that well, definitely was she true. She says we need to order her ago. book. Oh, I'm gonna you order her book. You can be perfect, or you can be happy. I so the version that I usually say is you can either you can either be right or you can be happy, and it would be interesting. And I and we I probably need to write that book mm -hmm. about y you can either be right or you can be happy, because. I mean, we have a lot of clients and it's, and more importantly, right. we have opposing parties that aren't letting go of their hatred and their hurt feelings and their desire for revenge. And they're got an attorney that's really stoking that. Right. And it's this desperate need to be right mm -hmm. and need to be appreciated, need to feel special. And the need to be right 
they have this argument that they're only having with themselves Mm -hmm. and they can't let it go. And they have to really understand that you can be right about the way that you feel. Mm -hmm. Um, but the right thing to do also is to let it go. Right. Because you can either be right and hold on to that and let it destroy you or you can be happy. Right. And you have to let that go in order to be happy. Um, and well, that's and a big I think part that of what if we you don't let it go through. and you, you hang on to being right or hang on to being perfect, then you're going to lose out on so much. Exactly. Yeah. Perfectionism, like extreme perfectionism, absolutely is a, is a problem. Mm-hmm. And if you beat yourself up when you're not perfect, that's when it is a problem. Right. And I'd, I'd, I'd like to see, I, I would actually probably refine that because mm-hmm. I would ask the question of, are you, do, are you, are you very disappointed if you're not perfect? Mm-hmm. And what is your level of disappointment in those things and rank that? Because for me, my, the way that I've, I have a healthy approach to, to perfectionism. Mm-hmm. I, I, I realize that and it, it, perfectionism, it also depends on what lens you look at it through. And especially like the, a musical performance, like you know you go out there and like your even if it's not your level of perfect, you know, right. absolute execution, mm-hmm. go out there and have fun with it and you're going to be fine. And, and if you give yourself that freedom and flexibility to where your performance is, you're so well prepared, mm-hmm. then y- your performance is just a joy, whether that's with music or whether that's in court or whether that's with comedy on a stage. Mm-hmm. Like I, I certainly wasn't perfect my first um, uh, comedy routine. And I actually even heard because I did a, a, a Rodney Dangerfield routine, two of them, and there were like like punchlines in the jokes that mm-hmm. if you get it all done perfectly, then it's that much funnier. But it was still really funny to them with like you know three out of the five major punchlines in it mm-hmm. uh, that I that I did. I don't know how how many of them that I actually did, and I put something like out of order. And I actually watched the episode that we released this morning, Dana, the comedian, Mm -hmm. where I did the great Southern comfort, uh, joke where, you know, about the flight Mm -hmm. and like, I messed that up even there. (laughs) I messed up at least two parts of it. Yeah. And, uh, it was, it was still fine. Right. And so I'll go out the next time and see, like, maybe I'll get it down to where I really get it and I've, I've got it it and it can be perfect. But, even performing it not perfect if they were laughing like that was good enough and in business a lot of times good enough is good enough a lot of things don't have to be perfect and too many businesses don't get they don't ship it there's a book actually called ship it Mm -hmm. and and that's what we're doing in this podcast i mean like i haven't beat ourselves up about it 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 bothers me some some of the audio problems that we had in some of the episodes Mm -hmm. um like we had we had that buzz that we had for a, a couple of the episodes and then it was really echoey and we didn't have the good mics. And I was like, no, let's just work and improve. Right. And eventually we're going to get there. And we're going to get there so early on because of those philosophies. Mostly it's the more important thing is having momentum mm-hmm. and keeping the momentum going. Making sure that no matter what, like we're, this is just the, we're scratching the surface at best. Like this is the very beginning of the podcast. Right. And each time we get better and better and better mm-hmm. and and w- we've realized having guests is um much more easy for us to riff back and forth and one of the things i was worried about i was like wow we in our early episodes we talked about like how i created soft divorce and that and, and i'm going what happens if people don't watch those episodes like and then we don't get that out and then that wasn't that good of a quality of an episode even daniel on one of them he's like you know because of the audio i didn't really watch it need the rest of it and like it didn't it didn't bother me because i know i go that's where we are right and and if anything that that's perfect it's that it's perfect that everything all of this is okay and that we're moving forward and getting better and better right and um no, yeah. I agree with you, hundred percent. And that's where we do that whole, you know, going out and ending the episode on a low note. And I think we've done that. So. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> I, I took that from an Eddie. If you saw one of Eddie, Eddie Izzard's, oh by the way, he has a new special out, and it's like pretty good. Um, and uh, but I took that. Is from it on him. Netflix? It's on Netflix. It just, okay. I think it just came out over the weekend, and I watched it. Um, and I, he may have another one, but I, I was a big Eddie Izzard fan. His uh, Dress to Kill. I think was his best work that he ever did. And it is just absolutely hilarious. It is the funniest, I mean, it, it is great. 
and uh, I don't think he's ever going to be my favorite comedian, so he'll live a long, nice long time. Yeah. But because um, all my favorite comedians <laughs> die as soon as, like, if, if, if you. Well, if let's I, just not speak it out it, in the universe. Yeah, Ralphie <laughs> May. Yeah, I know. Okay, yeah. No, but, well, his father just passed away. And we it's, don't want it's any mentioned more in the show, so maybe that'll die. Do it. So, yeah. But it's been sad. if you are a comedian and you want to come on the show, we'd love to have you. And in the meantime, like, subscribe. Um, Comment. Yes, like Tell our Tell us who page. your favorite comedian is because actually, for some reason, it's we're finding that it's easy to get comedians to come on the show. And I think we're going to have a bunch of comedians that are on this podcast. So yep. comment and tell us who your favorite comedians and are. And we like to laugh. So And we do like to laugh. And, and we if want, you like to laugh, watch us because, of course, like I do stupid stuff. and <laughs> It's only, it's only pr- pronouncing words. I can hate y'all. <laughs> And on that note, <laughs> give us a like and yes. love us and love the podcast. Dana Subscribe Palmer and Lawyer Dana and Jennifer Hardy Har Har. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. <laughs> the Lawyer Dana Podcast.